Hi there, let's go over what a kernel of a die graph is. I'll show you some examples and give you some basic facts about kernels. Let's read the definition. A kernel in a die graph D is an independent set S from the vertex set where every vertex outside S is adjacent to S. This is sometimes called a set that is stable and absorbing. So let me just quickly explain what this means. An independent subset of the vertex set, that means that none of the vertices in S are adjacent to or from each other. And we also require that every vertex outside S is adjacent to some vertex in S. That's what a kernel is. Calling it stable, that means it's independent. None of the vertices in S are adjacent to each other. And every vertex outside of S being adjacent to some vertex in S, that's what we mean when we say S is absorbing. That's what a kernel is. It's a subset of the vertex set that is stable and absorbing. To see an example of a kernel, let's start by looking at this directed four cycle. If we pick this vertex to be in our kernel, then certainly we can't have this vertex as well because then we wouldn't have an independent set. And remember, kernels are independent sets. We could have this vertex, however, and together these two vertices would make a kernel. For one, it's an independent or stable set. These two vertices are not adjacent to each other. The only other thing that's required is that all the vertices not in this independent set, this one and this one, are adjacent to a vertex that is in the independent set. In other words, they have successors in the independent set. This vertex is adjacent to this one, which is in the independent set, and this vertex is adjacent to this one, which is in the independent set. So by definition, these two vertices make up a kernel of the directed four cycle. And of course, you can see if we had picked these two vertices, we would also have a kernel. So kernels are not unique. A basic question we might ask is, does every die graph have a kernel? Let's look at this five cycle to answer that question, and I've labeled the vertices because I think that will make this easier. If we're trying to make a kernel of this graph, we may begin by picking the vertex A. If we pick A, we can't have B, since A is adjacent to B, but we could have C, but once we pick A and C, we can't have any other vertex. We can't have D, since C is adjacent to it, and we can't have E since it is adjacent to A. So we could only have two vertices in our kernel if we're trying to make one, and you can see that this in fact does not make a kernel. It is an independent set since A and C aren't adjacent to each other, but not every other vertex is absorbed by this set. B is adjacent to C, so that's good. We need all the other vertices to be adjacent to our set, and E is adjacent to A, so that's good, but D is not adjacent to any vertex in our set, and so this is not a kernel. And you can see how this same problem would pop up no matter which two vertices we picked from the five cycle. So this five cycle does not have a kernel, and we would run into this problem with any odd cycle graph. So here's the fact about cycles and kernels. Odd cycles have no kernels, like we saw, but even cycles do. End of story. And here's just a general diagram that might help you understand what kernels are in case it's not clear yet. This is what a kernel might look like. You can see we've got vertices and none of them are adjacent to each other. It's an independent or stable set. Now, as far as the rest of the graph goes outside of the kernel, those vertices can have all sorts of edges between them, but every one of them must also have an edge going to the kernel. For it to be a kernel, all the other vertices not in it have to be adjacent to some vertex in the kernel. And that is what a kernel is. Hopefully the definition's clear. Like I said a minute ago, odd cycles don't have kernels. But let's deepen that discussion a little bit. What if we consider graphs that have odd cycles, even though the graph itself isn't an odd cycle? Well, here's what we can say about this. 
every die graph with no odd cycles has a kernel. So here's an example of a graph that has no odd cycles. You'll see that we do have an even cycle over here, so that's no problem. But over here, there are no odd cycles. So this die graph should have a kernel. Let's try to find one. Remember, every vertex not in the kernel needs to be adjacent to a vertex that is in the kernel. So since this vertex E isn't adjacent to anything, it definitely needs to be in the kernel. By noticing that, we can start to find some other vertices that have to be in the kernel. For example, D cannot be in the kernel now since it's adjacent to E. And that means that C is going to need to be in the kernel because it's only adjacent to D. But D's not in the kernel, so C is going to have to be in the kernel, since it can't be adjacent to anything that's in the kernel. I know that all might have sounded a little bit confusing. You might have to listen to it again and think through it yourself. All right, what else has to be in the kernel? Let's think about G for a minute. Remember, every vertex needs to either be in the kernel or be adjacent to the kernel. So for G, we could include it or we could include F, but we can't include F because it's adjacent to E. Okay, so should we include G then? Well, we could also include H instead since G is adjacent to H, but I think we should include G because if we include G, then we can also include A and now we've got a kernel. So this set of vertices, A, C, E, and G makes a kernel of this directed graph that has no odd cycles. And you can take a minute to verify that. This, of course, is an independent set. None of the vertices in it are adjacent to each other. And all the vertices not in it have some successor that is in it. D is adjacent to E. F is adjacent to E. B is adjacent to C and G and H is adjacent to A. So this set, maybe we call it S, is certainly a kernel of the digraph. I'm just trying to give you some background on kernels, but of course we will prove some of these facts in later lessons. So we've seen that odd cycles don't have kernels. Furthermore, if a digraph has no odd cycles, it definitely has a kernel. Then an obvious question remains. Is it possible that a graph can have an odd cycle and have a kernel? We know that an odd cycle by itself can't have a kernel, but what if a bigger graph has an odd cycle in it? Can it have a kernel? In fact, the answer is yes. A digraph with an odd cycle may still have a kernel, and here is an example. We see this digraph does have an odd cycle. Can you find a kernel in this digraph? Let's try. Maybe we include the vertex U and the vertex X, just as a quick guess. There's only four vertices, so can't take that many tries. Uh, this, in fact, will work. U and X are, of course, not adjacent to each other, so that's good. This is an independent set, and it's an absorbing set. Y is adjacent to X, and it's adjacent to U, and V is adjacent to 2x. So we're good. This is a kernel of the digraph, even though it has an odd cycle. So hope this video was helpful for understanding what a kernel is. One more time, a kernel in a digraph is an independent set where every vertex outside of it is adjacent to some vertex in it. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. See through a big glass jar.